Hey YouTube, this is VidHead85. Can we talk for a minute? Okay, well, thank you very much. This is going to be a legalese pose, uh, post, la, la, la. and uh, today I showed my love for you tans because I spent most of my day searching for the news in regard to the ruling in hope that it would give me the case name so I could take a look at the, the opinion, and then I read it, and I took notes. I went from 53 pages to 11 pages, which will be the long version of my uh, of a blog post, to five pages, and this is a short version. So, um, if you don't at least like, comment, or share, I'll reach through the screen and you know, grab you like Ghost Dad and give you a nice wallop or two. No, uh, I'm just kidding. So now that I have, um, now that I'm finished um, scaring off any new subscribers or readers of my blog, I'm going to get into the news. So, Utah has become number 18 so far. Uh, we say that because of the fact that Judge Robert Shelby hasn't issued a stay on, on the opinion that was sought by Utah. Uh, apparently, a lot of people are of two opinions. One is that he's an activist judge. I found out he is an Obama appointee. And two, he did the right thing. But no matter what you think about this ruling, I personally am ecstatic because I thought Utah was going to be one of the lone holdouts like Mississippi, uh, which I think they were the last ones to repeal slavery. Interesting. But they, I thought that they would be one of the people that the Supreme Court would have to kick and drag into the 20th century, let alone the 21st, for crying out loud. I mean, especially in Mississippi, they still think the, the Civil War ended five years ago. Well, when, when you read it, if you have the fortunate, fortunate pleasure to be able to stomach through it all, or you can watch my video since I'll break it down. Now, three couples filed suit in federal court to declare Amendment 3, which passed with two-thirds of the vote, 66%, in 2004, unconstitutional, and their reasons and um, um, the reason for the 2004 constitutional amendment are as follows. Number one, Bayer versus Mike, Hawaii State Supreme Court said the government had to produce proof or had produced no proof that denying gay and lesbian couples a license protected a government interest. The second reason is in 1996, Congress passed DOMA. Section 2 said that states would decide for themselves if they would allow same-sex marriages, but Section 3 said for federal definition uh, and fe federal purposes that marriage under, under the federal law meant a man and a woman as husband and wife. Third reason is in 1999, the S Vermont Supreme Court required the state to offer all of the benefits of of uh, marriage to same gender couples. That was Baker versus Vermont. In 2003, Lawrence versus Texas said that sodomy, defined as mouth to penile or vagina and penis to anus, but mostly applied to anal sex between gay men, and laws that targeted gay people as sodomy is often connected with gay sexual expression were unconstitutional. Texas law um, the, was the homosexual conduct law section 2106 was in question. And the fifth and last reason, finally, in 2003, the Massachusetts Supreme Judicial Court issued the Goodrich decision, overturned a state statute that said marriage is between a man and a woman. This created a flurry because people knew that folks would go to Massachusetts and then go back to their states and fight through the courts to legalize marriage there, which was addressed by Section 2 of DOMA seven years prior. Now, Utah, as I said, did have, um, Utah, like Massachusetts, had two statutes before that said that marriage is between a man and a woman and is the law and explicitly stated that marriage between any gay and lesbian couples are void and prohibited. So apparently they sought some extra cushion in the event that the statute might be challenged, yet they brought the statute down as well as the amendment in one fell swoop. First, the judge establishes the standard of review as rational basis as sexual orientation is not a suspect class. Suspect class is like gender race. Um, suspect class is three things if there has been, um, what is it, long history of discrimination, um, if discrimination still persists. Um, and what was it, uh, immutable characteristic is, is another one. So um, he says, no, we're gonna, uh, we're not going to even have heightened scrutiny, which is the highest, uh, highest scrutiny there. 
Next, he talks about the effect of the Windsor case and that it's not the Tenth Amendment that delegates, or and it's not a Tenth Amendment case as the Tenth Amendment delegates certain powers to the states and the, or Windsor was not decided on those grounds. But due process, and the same claim is being disputed here in regards to the Marriage Amendment. Amendment 3, Utah argued that Baker versus Nelson is controlling precedent, as a lot of conservatives would like us to believe. But Moore versus Republican Party, 1975, says that a summary dismissal is a slender read on which to base future decisions. Therefore, more evidence has to be taken into account. Since other developments such as Lawrence uh, v. Texas, which struck down sodomy laws, and Romer, which struck down a constant Colorado constitutional amendment that said no government branch can pass laws or policies that would protect based on sexual orientation. This, along with the Windsor case, also undermined any thought that Baker ver of Baker versus Nelson being control uh, being controlling precedent. Baker is a case that happened in 1971 when the Minnesota Supreme Court said that marriage as a matter of between a man and a woman did not violate. 14th Amendment, the, the 14th Amendment rights, and the U.S. Supreme Court dismissed it for want of substantial federal question, which is why it never dealt with the, which it never had dealt with, with, with the issue on its merits. So they basically said, what federal question is it asking us to resolve, or is there even one? Utah's arguments were threefold. The plaintiffs are not qualified to enter into a marriage relationship. The plaintiffs are seeking a new right, not access to an existing one. And history and tradition have not recognized the right to marry a person of the same gender. The court um, the court turns to each one and addresses them in turn. The court's finding is that the, the plaintiffs are qualified to marry. The state says they are not qualified to marry but only want their feel only want the feelings associated with marriage. However, one of the plaintiffs in one of the in introducing one of the plaintiffs um, in her biography before the court, she was denied Social Security benefits when her partner died. Also, one couple has been married in Iowa, um, but it's not recognized in their home state of Utah. In regard to the procreative argument also that they brought up, postmenopausal women can marry, and couples who have no intention of, of uh, having a child have the ability to marry. Also, the Supreme Court has said that deadbeat dads can marry as of the Red Hail versus a Blocky ruling. Prisoners can marry as of the Turner versus Safley ruling. Interracial couples can marry as of the Loving versus Virginia um, court case. All of them can marry. It is only important as a religious matter, but not in a civil marriage. Procreation has never been the reason to annul a marriage as far as I know. That was my side note. The second the second claim, the, the court asserts that the plaintiffs seek an access, to, access to an existing right, Justice, or, uh, Judge Shelby says that by asserting uh, says that by asserting the couples have a right to marry someone.